I come on here. And here can be everywhere from Facebook to X, formerly known as Twitter, also LinkedIn, and uh, what other ones? YouTube, too. Hey, uh, my name, Frankie Flowers, aka Frank Ferragini, uh, four time best selling garden author, garden expert. You can see me Monday through Fridays all on City TV's Breakfast Television, where I'm wild about weather, passionate about plants. And I come here each and every week to try to help you and offer you some assistance with your garden. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, if you're here the first time, just put those questions in the comments. What will happen is I will do my best at answering those, as well as the community of gardeners that are on here will also reach out and answer those at the same time. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody as well uh, enjoys themselves here. This is a positive environment, so no negative talk whatsoever. And once again, this is family day weekend in the province of Ontario, a time to celebrate family. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, some of the people that you probably treat worst in this world are your family, but shouldn't you be treating them the best? Okay, let's give a little bit of a shout out there as well. It's my good friend, Matthew Amos. Did you see America's Most Wanted yet? And America's Most Wanted is getting good. I have not yet, but I'm going to go on to, uh, I think I'll go on to Roger's di uh, demand and take a look at that. We got Penny that's giving us a shout out this evening saying hi to you. I got Paula Polly, my good friend, Paula, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Uh, she's saying happy Family's Day as well. I spent most of my family day weekend up with my boys at Horseshoe Resort, did some skiing as well with some friends and had uh, just an absolutely amazing time. Supoff saying, hey there, good evening to you as well. Lots of snow, by the way, up at Horseshoe Valley as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about a couple things before we get into it um, and before we get into some of the questions. One thing that I want to talk to you about is... Now that we are in the month of February, today's date is February the 18th. We're already getting our way through February already. We really should be starting to, to think about developing our garden plan or the way that we're going to attack our garden for this year. What are some gardens that you're going to maybe want to edit, maybe remove? What are some plants that have caused you issues? Like for the last three years, haven't given you a flower, have maybe had rampant disease in our insects. Should we replace those or move those to a new location? Uh, what vegetables or herbs will you grow for this year? Uh, what are some areas or problems that you want to attack and get rid of? And that's going to give us a really good plan or, and or map for our garden for this year. And it's a great time really to think about the garden because indeed it's winter outdoors. So if we think about the garden, we can think about warmer weather ahead and it's going to creep up on us so fast, so fast indeed that pretty soon we'll be out there working away. We'll be pulling weeds, battling against slugs and bugs like aphids. And then those good old June bugs will come back as well. Uh, how was asking? This, I think she was saying, Blake Smith is probably asking how was skiing. Skiing was great. We got Roach that's saying uh, a big shout out from Sturgeon Falls as well. Uh, we got Adrian out there saying, yo, hi, Frank. Uh, and that's Adrian Ellis. We got Lori Smith there as well saying good evening from Belize. That'd be a nice place to be. Believes it'd be a really nice place to be. Hey, I want to show you guys something. Just to give you a reminder, if you're looking for tips and tricks, information, and you're maybe thinking about, ah, I just want to dream of warmer times, you know, you can always go on to YouTube. And a lot of people may not know, and subscribe if you can, that there is a Frankie Flowers YouTube channel. And on this channel, there's a nice extended version of orchids. There's a full, um, nice little orchid 101. There's information on watering plants. There's recipes that are there. There's even some podcasts that I did alongside of Amanda Weldon. There's a ton of videos and information that's there that you can just kind of go and find out and learn more about. As well, there's a section called Shorts where you can see some of the shorter videos that you can see on everything from why to dust your plants, uh, Monstera, maybe some of the Monstera poles that are out there, some recipes as well, propagation, uh, pruning, everything that you would need to know is there. So if you guys get a chance, I would be very grateful if you popped on to YouTube and just hit subscribe. You can see subscribe right there. Boom. And with that, you can uh, start following and start learning. And I'm doing my best to put that information out there to you as well. Another reminder for those that are out there and maybe joining us for the first time if you ever need information about me or you're looking for other nice long form blogs as well, you can always go to frankieflowers.com. Once again, this is frankieflowers.com. You can see that there's a host of articles that are here, of course, 
And what I would really recommend, our latest article that you'll see here is for even how to get rid of fungus gnats, which is a great article. You can see some different pictures that are there and some different recommendations for you. But I really recommend that if you were to go to the bottom of the website, you scroll all the way down. You can see it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. But you're going to go right to the bottom and go down there and get on the list. That's, the, uh, that's my newsletter. And my newsletter is all about trying to help you. My newsletter is not about selling you stuff. There may be some options there to sell things. But my newsletter really is focused on value and making sure that I can help you. And that's my goal that's on here is to help you as well. We got Carol Jones in Quebec who says that it snowed all day there. We got Lacey that's given a shout out from Oshawa or the Poshawa as I learned. Uh, we got Heather asking a question this evening on when she plant a weeping, uh, it would be a begonia bulb. So begonia, if that's what it is, or a begonia, so it would be begonia, B-E. Um, they are a warm plant, um, almost like a tropical plant. So you can be planting that bulb in a pot indoors by the beginning of March, but you wouldn't want to plant it outdoors or put it in a pot outdoors until we're frost free. For instance, here in the province of Southern Ontario, the bulk of the province, anytime between May 15th to May 20th is our last frost date. That's when you'd be putting it outdoors. Um, we got another comment and a question here from T-Bone. Good evening, Frankie. No rush for spring here yet. Still sitting on a few thousand boxes of carrots. Hey guys, buy local there's one of your local carrot farmers that are out there too just saying yeah they work super hard out there and uh t-bone yeah there's onions carrots there's a lot of guys sitting on apples too apparently there's thousands and thousands of boxes of local apples that are around so hopefully that works out and hello frankie it's sure very windy in penny tang right now uh when uh penny tang is going to get wind gusts today to about 60 kilometers per hour Enjoy your long weekend. See you Tuesday morning on BT. Just to let you guys know, a little inside secret, I will be on assignment. I will be live on location on Tuesday morning in for this week. I will be hopping on a jet plane tomorrow morning uh, and flying to Turks and Caicos. Uh, there with Verbo. So each and every day you'll see a different property that I will be featuring. I kind of landed a pretty good gig, eh? Yeah, I don't know how I did it. Uh, Inder. Hi, Frankie. When is the best time to move endless summer hydrangea and not to lose bloom this summer? So it's more the pruning with the endless, uh, the endless summer hydrangeas. They bloom on old wood. So it's more pruning than, than moving. As soon as we get our ground frost out and as soon as you start to see some of those buds crack or even when the ground frost is out and it's still sitting dormant, you can move it. So the best time to move that is either in spring. So that would be mid to late April or I'd be removing it in early fall, and that would be in early September. Those are the two times that I would recommend uh, moving that guy there. Uh, it is Nasima. Hi, Frankie. Can I plant a bird of paradise in water instead of fertilizer indoors? Uh, bird of paradise, uh, if you're thinking about water versus uh, basically soil, um, I would, a bird of paradise tend to do, does better, not in a hydroponic setting, that would be in water it would do better in potting soil. So my recommendation for you do is to plant it in potting soil. The other reason for that is the bird of paradise over time will get big. And when you're trying to grow something in water and then you transfer it over to soil, it can go through some shock. So I would rather you just go with a good premium potting soil, like a miracle Grow potting soil, and just plant it and grow it from a uh, uh, potting soil from there. We got another shout out here from Donna. I watch BT every day. Please call me so I can win some money. That's Devo Brown, man. Just the weather guy. I don't control the calls. I'll tell Devo, by the way, as well. Yeah, each and every day. If you're not familiar with Breakfast Television, uh, Breakfast Television is live on City TV. You just go on to Breakfast Television's website. And all you do is type in Breakfast Television into Google. You can get there. You can register. And each and every day we do a call. And each and every day you have to say, I wake up with BT. If you say that when we call, you'll win 1,000. But let's say that people be before you didn't get it right they actually all add up. So I think tomorrow we'll have four thousand on Tuesday, four thousand dollars that we're giving away. Uh, we got Victoria. Good evening, Frankie. Hello to you as well, Judy. Hi, Frankie. How should I plant bulbs to bloom uh, for Easter in the home? Thank you, Judy. So if we're looking for 
So right now, if you didn't have any bulbs, you won't be able to find prepared bulbs. But what you would be able to find right now is potted bulbs in four and six inch pots. So if you want them for Easter, if you saw them on really good deal and special, and let's say that they're just sprouting, all you would do is actually take those guys and pop them on and put them into your cold cellar. Let's say that you had a fruit cellar and or cold cellar that has no windows in that cold cellar and stays cold, but above freezing. What'll happen is the bulbs will just sit there and stay dormant. And then about three days to five days before Easter, you just pull them out. You put them into a room that has sun and warmth and they'll start to push out and then push bloom into to be. If by chance you see that they're moving too quick, you just put them back into a cool, dark room. It'll turn them off, meaning they'll go back into a dormancy and you can turn them on and turn them off. And that's how you can time them to bloom for you. We got Anne that's saying, uh, hello from Belleville, wind blowing and snow today. Yeah, we did have a lot of lake effect snow. So in Belleville, the snow that you saw there would have been a southwesterly wind coming off Lake Ontario, pushing that snow over to you. And we did have southwesterlies today. We got Carolyn saying, yo, 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 uh, Carolyn Ladder uh, saying, yo, 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 yo. Hello, Frankie from Florida. That's awesome. We got Marilyn, Marilyn Durka. Hi, Frankie. Love your shoes. Question for you about peace lily the leaves are growing but it has never bloomed since i bought it any suggestions please uh, my peace lily just in the room to the side here has two blooms that are just to come how is that blooming for instance a couple things is, is number one i really allow it to dry out in between waterings that can set the buds in to make it bloom number two is they tend to bloom more when they're more pot bound so by being in a container that they've been in for some time, they will bloom. Being in, even though spathophyllium is a low light loving plant, it does still need to receive light. So being in a decently bright room, but not directly in front of a window and keep it away from a heating vent. So cut back on your watering, make sure that it's in a pot that's not too big for it. And then on occasion, fertilize with an all purpose miracle Grow, And then what I mean, once a month at most, and that will set your bloom into bee for you. Uh, we got Lori Smith that's saying, enjoy Turks. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, Tracy Reynolds, forcing bulbs for sure. So with forcing bulbs, guys, if you're thinking about doing that, let's say that you had some bulbs that you never got to planting, and they actually were in a, in a cold cellar that they just sat there cold and dark, but above freezing, that would have put them through their plunge period. So just putting them into soil, letting them stay in soil, in that same setting, cool, dark, which is staying around five degrees would be ideal in there for a few weeks and then pulling them out and bringing them in and putting some water into them and then uh, just some light and heat. Boom, that's forcing a bulb. But a bulb needs to go through a dormancy period to make it force it into bloom. That's what it means by forcing. The dormancy period is when it's in like your soil outdoors in your garden. It's in the soil, so it's dark and it's in an environment that's cold and even but it has the soil to insulate it. So those are some things that you need to do to put it into its plunge period. We got Susan, 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 Bobuzen, Baram, Baram, Frafuzen. Is it true that leap years are under unpredictable for gardening? My cilia nono used to say this, my Sicilian. Hey, my Sicilian, not your Sicilian. Your Sicilian nono used to say this. Uh, gardening is unpredictable every year, guys. Uh, especially it's weather that makes gardening unpredictable. Um, the weather patterns that we've been receiving where we've been getting, you know, extreme temperatures from warm, like 15.7 degrees last Friday at Pearson in February. What the heck is that? That's unpredictable. So our weather patterns are what are making it unpredictable. And that's where it's hard to control. Uh, leap years. There's a lot of folklore. Uh, but no true science around it where from moon phase planting leap years different triggers out there that will you know determine and or impact the garden season there are some things that have science backing it let's say for instance you know one of the ways to see that we're going to get rain is if we look to nature and we were to look to a spider and that spider is dismantling its web science has shown that during areas of low pressure spiders will dismantle their web so that's in a case of something that is actually scientifically proven. So I hope I answered your question there or just gave you something to think about, by the way. Uh, we got uh, Annette here replying to Frankie Flowers. Hello, Frankie. Can you plant vegetables on your balcony? If so, what kind? As long as your balcony is west or south facing, 
you're going to get a, at least six hours of direct afternoon sunlight. So that's the key. Um, you can easily plant things on your balcony. I would suggest you to put them in larger containers, at least a 16 inch pot, cherry tomatoes, but get a bush type cherry tomato, even like something like a tiny Tom or a tiny Tim, forgive me. Um, they're super easy. You can do peppers. Those are super easy. Any herb plants are super easy. Lettuce greens are easier to grow in um, early summer, late spring, early summer. In the heat of summer, they tend to burn out. You can grow kale in a pot. You can grow many things in a pot, but sun is so, so, so key that's out there. Good guy, Craig. Craig from Georgetown. What's the best indoor plant, easy maintenance condo with electric baseboard heating? So Craig, the electric baseboard heating, of course, is going to make your home exceptionally dry. So add a humidifier first off. A couple easy plants would be a snake plant, really easy, or a ZZ plant. Those are two. ZZ plant or snake plant, super easy for you, but adding a humidifier would be good for you and also good for the plants. We got Tracy. I hope that Valentine's Day went well for you, Tracy, with the flower shop out there. Frankie, we got to collaborate on a project. Let's do it, Tracy. Let's reach out. Let's try to make something work. Uh, Nasima, uh, who's saying, hi, Frankie. Why my, my jasmine plant is not blooming? I buy it with lots of bloom, and since then, it stopped blooming. What can I do? Well, your jasmine plant is a plant that is a tropical plant. Fantastic. Likes good humidity inside your home, so misting it on occasion during the week will be helpful for it. But the main reason probably why it's not blooming is it's just not getting enough light units. A reminder, January was one of the grayest Januaries that we've ever had. It's actually a record-breaking gray. And even in the month of February, we've seen some sunlight, but not a lot. So in order for that to sustain bloom power, to bloom, it needs daylight hours. And that means daylight, not just daylight hours. It needs actually light units. So if you want to encourage it to bloom a little bit, you can always add a grow light and point a grow light to it to kind of help it out as well. Uh, then we got Tracy Reynolds actually with another comment here. What's in your cup this Sunday evening? LOL. Uh, what's in my cup is tea to let you know. It's a, it's a fruit tea by David's tea. Non-caffeine, because I don't want to stay up too late. And yeah, you can ask me any questions, whatever you guys want to ask. You can even ask questions about anything. Uh, I love my pothos and olivera. Yeah, pothos is super easy too. That's a good suggestion as well for an easy plant. Olivera, I have one too. I think an aloe vera should be in every home. Another easy plant, for instance, is like I have my little jade that sits beside me here on my desk in my office, which is for good feng shui. My snake plant's just right over here to the left of me as well. Uh, the Swiss cheese pothos is right there. Boom, I just have that growing in water. Those are just some plants that are kicking around me right in my little area. We got Diane. Uh, Diane saying, my daffodils are popping up. Can I transplant them and bring them inside to bloom, say, for Easter? Diane, it's not something I would recommend because they actually have already gone through. You can try. You can try a few if you want to, but it's not something that I would recommend because I think what will happen is they'll go through their cycle too fast, but you can try. Uh, we got Ashley. Ashley, didn't see a horseshoe this weekend. Good evening. Can you provide tips on silver vase bromelade? So the silver vase bromelade, really interesting plant. Of course, the bromelades is where you need to water them is in the center. So we don't put water on the soil. We actually put the water right where that flower spike comes out. So you just put a little bit of water that's in there. They love bright light. Um, they will actually keep and maintain their bloom for a long period of time. They are more of an arid plant, but even misting even once a month would be a great benefit for it. Um, and then just don't water too often. So bright light, bright room, mist at least once per uh, month is all you would need to do. And then just water into the center, that little hole that you see in the center. It's almost like a little cup that you would say that's there, but it's a beautiful plant with a pink bloom that's on there too. We got Ender saying, yo, no, saying, hi, Frankie, love your show. Another question about moving plants. I'm rearranging my gardens this year. Good time to plan that guys. Make sure you plan that. When is the best time to move my peonies spring or fall? They are very established. Would I sacrifice bloom in the first year? Thanks. So um, I would move them as soon as you start to see the eyes popping out. So you're going to see that big clump of them. And then in the spring, let's say around the beginning of May, you start to see the little growth of the peony coming out. That way it's really great where we can see that whole plant easy to work with because we don't have the foliage that's there. We're going to lift that root mass out and you're going to see because if it's an older peony, it's going to be quite large. 
So we're going to probably split it into four sections. A sharp pair of shears split it into four sections. That's going to actually help that plant almost kick it right back into health and actually give it more vibrancy. You have more peonies that are from there and then we'll replant them. Best thing to do is to be doing that on a cooler, wetter week, not a week where we're forced, forecasted for warm, hot temperatures. And then use a miracle Grow quick start fertilizer to reduce transplant shock. Will you lose a few blooms? You may lose a few, but not many. Uh, and then you're going to have some very vibrant plants because it's an old established peony. It needs to be not only moved, it needs to be divided. And that's going to be a great benefit to it as well. So hope that helped you out there. Uh, Bill Kennedy, utterly smooth, family-owned business. That's Bill's family's business. Frankie, safe travels. We are having perfect weather in Northeastern Ohio for lots of maple syrup. I hope you guys are doing great there as well. And uh, I got to tell you guys, if you guys want a beautiful, got it right here, and I can take wherever I go. This is utterly smooth. It's a moisturizing hand cream uh, that's non-greasy, uh, great for after when I've been at the ski hill, great for after when I'm gardening. So, uh, and that's Bill's family business. So, you know, you, you know, like that the people that I work with, not only their stuff good, family owned, and they're just good people that kind of hop on and they love this gardening world as well. Uh, we're playing to Craig, Carol Jones is, which is great. Uh, so this is, this is the community of gardeners that we have on here is that everybody's going to use their experiences and their lessons and their failures and successes to help you as well. Look at Carol. She says, we have electric heat. With the humidifier, my spider plants and possums grow very well. Uh, aloe vera and also Christmas cactus. Great for giving some suggestions that are out there. Um, we got Cheryl that's saying, hey, hello. Hi there too. Um, Matthew wants me to say hi to Sid. I'll say hi to Sid for you there, Matthew. Diane. Uh, Diane is saying, thank you. I'll enjoy them in the garden instead. Uh, we got uh, Ashley with another question. Uh, oh, so interesting. Thank you. It is blowing my mind with its many blooms. We were at Horseshoe Saturday afternoon. Sorry we missed you. Uh, thank you for the advice. I was definitely watering it wrong. You are totally right. That's out there. Uh, we got Ann Dolan that's saying great info for splitting and moving peonies. Yeah, the reason why we divide, well, the reason why we, we divide plants is once we see perennial plants that we have in our garden, let's say daylilies, peonies, hostas, those are some classics. Once we see those plants and those plants all of a sudden are lacking bigger, meaning that they just don't look as, as happy as what they did before. They're not as big. The, the, maybe the leaves on the host are not growing as big. Well, that means that they do to be lifted, mean to be lifted and divided. So dividing gives uh, perennial plants a new lease on life. And for most perennial plants, every three to five years should be divided and they'll do way better. So I'm glad that you like the advice that's out there too. Uh, we got uh, another comment here from Betty. Is that how you transplant most of the perennials by dividing and when they just come out? Yeah, pretty much. If you have an older established plant, if you're doing it and moving it, that's what you're doing is dividing it. Uh, and you know, I'll do some good videos coming up this spring on dividing as well. We got Sarah. Sarah's got a question out there. Oh, Frankie, you truly are a gardening god. Thank you for all you do. Thanks, Sarah, as well. It's my passion. You know, it's just what I love to do. I, you know, that's why I come on here Sundays at seven. Um, Try to get out here as, as I try to come on here every week just to give you a half an hour to kind of make this a better season for you, to make it better, to, to learn from you as well. You know, I'm learning on some of these tips and tricks, even like tonight, big discussion on electric baseboard heat and good tropical plants. We've had several good recommendations out there. Linda, I had to dig out two perennials because my front garden is being dug out and a, a repair cracked uh, clay pipe. I, I put perennials in yard waste bag, hoping they will be okay uh, to plant in uh, May. So what I would say to you, if you can group those perennial plants together, put them in an area where you're going to get a lot of snow. If you have, even if you were to go out and you could buy a couple bags of soil, just around the roots, just take those bags of soil and kind of lean that bags of soil around the roots of those perennial plants. That'll insulate them a bit because if it gets too cold and those roots freeze and they don't have the protection of soil around them, there's a chance that we could lose them. Uh, we got Dell uh, Core who's saying, Hey, from uh, good old Maple, Ontario. Uh, we got Ann here saying, how often do you water your jade plant? Uh, I maybe water my jade plant maybe twice a month at most, sometimes once a month, once a month in the winter months. When it comes to this, the summertime, I'm about two to three times per month. It's not in that large of a pot. Uh, I haven't watered it in a couple of weeks and I can still see that it's still sitting fairly moist. Actually, I can even feel in the weight of the pot. You can see what I do is it has... 
It's a grower pot inside a decorative pot. This decorative pot has the basin. So what I can do is when I water, I always make sure that there's no water just sitting in the back base at all, but always you're just using your fingers to check it to see that it's going. And you can see it's getting right here. we got a couple new leaves that are just popping right there. One and two, it's super happy. This is new growth that's here. There's some new growth that's happening right there. Really great. Great plant, by the way, jade plants are fun. Uh, that's a great question too. We got uh, another question right now. I seed coxcomb an Indian shot in the fall to plant in spring. What soil is the best to start? Thank you. So coxcomb is related to uh, celosia. Um, I also say coxcomb looks, reminds me of like a 1970s flower. It's in one and even the Indian shot. Uh, best seed, best soil to start is I would use a seed starting soil. Miracle Grow has the seed starting soil. The reason why you're using a seed starting soil, it's a little bit lighter. It has a little bit of vermiculite or a supplement similar to vermiculite within and perlite for extra drainage. And the seed starting soils are formulated so they can maintain moisture a little bit longer for the germination of the seed. Once again, seeds like coxcomb and even your Indian shot don't need light to germinate, uh, actually using a heating pad underneath them. And sometimes you'll find pads for seed germination is really beneficial because if you get the heat and the moisture, and even if you just put a plastic dome on the top, or even if you were just to take saran wrap across your tray, and wrap saran wrap across your tray. All of a sudden we're creating a good moisture, humid, high humidity that's there, the heating the soil, boom. We get the germination that will increase your germination. As soon as you see three leaves on that plant, you pull off that, um, that little uh, saran wrap or even the dome that you have on top. And then that's when they need light. As soon as they get three leaves on it, they need light. Sandra, Sandra, Sandra Bobama. Now uh, in the spring, my lavender looks terrible. How and what am I to do with this plant in the fall or spring. Uh, so we can prune back lavenders, of course, in the fall and or spring, but a lot of the times your lavenders need to be in poor soil. They need to be in a well-drained soil. So if your soil is just too rich, and I would love, Sandra, for you to take a picture of the area where your lavender is and a picture of your lavender and send me an email, frankie at frankieflowers.com. And I'd love to see if there's some recommendations that we can actually improve the lavender and to see what it's looking like and how you're referencing to. Do you need to do some pruning? Do we need to do, do some dividing or what is the soil that is planted in? Those are all really helpful things for me. We got Judy, Judy. Uh, Frankie, what is the correct way to start a new snake plant from a larger uh, plant that I already have? Thank you to, to Jody. So a lot of the times with this snake plant, I can grab the snake plant that's here, is you will see some side shoots that come off your snake plant. So you got your snake plant. You can see that there are some smaller side shoots that are starting to come in. So we can either take a side shoot and use that to start a plant. So I can take this one and just divide that out because I can see that it's also separated. Or what I can do is take a leaf cutting and from a leaf cutting, I can allow it to callus and then pop, pop it in. So those are two different ways of propagating. And so what I would recommend for you to do, because that's just a quick little answer, I would recommend for you to go to Google and just type in prop propagating steak plant. And you'll see the two different ways. So you can either take a division which is the small little side shoot that's coming off. And we're just going to go down and we're going to cut it and we can put it into a moist potting soil or you can even put it into water till it then starts to develop root and then into soil. Or we can take a leaf cutting. So either a division or a leaf cutting are two different ways that we can do that for. Uh, Sandra's going to say, I'll send pics to you in the spring of the uh, lavender. Thank you very much for that. Um, we got, uh, what do we got here from Chai? I've been hearing about heating pads. Thank you for uh, covering the idea. Yes, heating pads for seed starting is really good. So for instance, at the greenhouse, my family greenhouse, family business is Bradford Greenhouses. We have a germination chamber. And essentially what the germination chamber is a sauna. So we go and we put our trays through the seeding machine. We have a machine that has a drum seeder that picks up the seeds, drops them down. We'll go down a conveyor belt and then we'll put them onto racks. We then will put the racks into the germination chamber. The germination chamber has high humidity. When you open the door, you just see the steam pouring out. No, it's dark in there. And then we'll just put them in there and that will actually speed up our germination and speed up the process of growing and actually have us have a more successful germination count. So we get more seeds to germinate. We get them to germinate faster, more consistently by using that germination chamber. You can do the same thing with a heating pad and a dome over the top. You're basically creating a germination chamber that will be there for you as well. 
Uh, Ender is saying, how can I get a ZZ plant to be propagated with leaves? Thank you. The key about that is if you're taking a stem cutting off a ZZ plant, after you take the cutting, don't do anything with it. Take the cutting and you're gonna leave it out and we want it to callus. We actually want that cutting to dry and then we wait for it to dry, then we put it into soil. That's There's some plants out there that benefit from where you take the cutting and then from the cutting, you're allowing them to callus first. And we're always usually trying to use from the cutting is a more newer growth. So on new growth is better to take a cutting than on old growth. Uh, we got Carol, and this is the last one because we're at a half an hour. Uh, Carol, it would be amazing to see the process at the greenhouse, germination chamber, etc. I promise you I will do a video when I come back and I'll be back in a week's time. I'll do a behind the scenes video for you guys as well. So for all those that join me this evening and all those that will watch this any other time, uh, I'm always there to help. Once again, frankieflowers.com. Uh, check out my YouTube channel. Just type in Frankie Flowers into YouTube. Check out my Instagram. Lots of information that I'm doing to help you through this process of growing. Don't be shy. If you need to, go to frankieflowers.com. You can ask me a question on there about your home garden. Always here to help. I will see you on Tuesday morning live on Breakfast Television. Once again, I will be live on location Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from the island, well, from Turks, Turks and Caicos. So uh, showing you got a bunch of different verbal rental properties, which is going to be fun. So I'll see you, see you in a bit. I'm flying tomorrow. Going to leave on a jet plane. Happy family day, everybody, tomorrow as well.